Intensive cyber technology is very, very hot topic. And uh, we will start, I'm going to wait with this scotch for a minute. Uh, we will start by uh, introducing our guests uh, first, and uh, then uh, um, Guy will tell us what's the deal with this. Okay, Eugene Sherman, you please tell us uh, a couple of words about yourself and uh, your company. Uh, I'm Eugene Sherman. Uh, actually, uh, I'm working uh, many, many years in uh, IT and information security domain. Uh, in the last uh, 25 years, I worked for uh, uh, different uh, defense industries uh, like uh, Rafael and uh, Elbit. And also I worked, I uh, led uh, IT and information security organization of NSO Group. Uh, today, uh, I'm uh, working for a number of companies, for All Stars IT, and uh, also I have my own company uh, and work as an independent consultant in uh, IT and information security domains. Great, thank you. Iftach. Thank you. Uh, Iftach and Amit. I'm 25 years veteran of the information security field. Most of my career has been spent in hacking, pen testing, red teaming. You're a hacker? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, still am. And in the past few years, I've been uh, you know, kind of switching off towards the defensive side as the information security and application security manager for Amazon, a small online bookstore. And uh, over the past four years, I'm the chief security officer for Simpress, uh, which is an international company, 16,000 people, 45 countries, $3 billion. All right. Inbar. Uh, Inbar, today I'm the VP of research at Hunters. We do uh, OpenXDR. The reason I think I'm here, other than my known opinions, um, is that I spent 18 years in the military, in military intelligence. I was teaching uh, offensive. I, was, I wrote curriculum. I was a course commander. And I was also the one that gives the talk, uh, what we call a, a saint against uh, despicable. There's actually a talk that we give at courses. And I'm the, uh, the one against. And you can drink whiskey. I can okay. indeed. And, uh, Last but not least, um, Avi, Avi Arif, uh, which is the, actually the conference uh, chairman, IHLS, which is a good opportunity to hear a little bit about uh, IHLS, Avi. Uh, IHLS uh, is a, a media company that was established about 11 years ago. Uh, we found a void in the world of media and events and publishment of the world of uh, Homeland Security then very, very strong, because all the traditional media kind of companies were talking about defense. Nobody knew cyber was going to be what it is today. And IHLS has grown along the years from Homeland Security to more and more fields. One of them is cyber, as we see in this huge event. Okay. Now, Guy. Guy <laughs> Mizrahi is the chairman of this session, and uh, what is this all about? <laughs> First of all, um, I, I think that we need to drink. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. So you say we cannot sell uh, cyber products without drinking. We gotta lubricate the, the conscience somehow. So. <laughs> Cheers. 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 That's okay. So, um, I think that this panel is a continued talk of. Um, of an, let's say, unsolved problem that we always talk about when we are talking about something like selling intelligence and offensive cybersecurity tools and systems to other governments. Uh, there are a few people here that very, that, you know, that they have a strong opinion against it. There are some people here, I'm included, that are all for doing it. And I think that we are always writing about it in one group, one WhatsApp group that we have. We're always talking about it. And we wanted to put it on the table and discuss it freely because I don't think that this is something that we should be ashamed of. And I don't think that this uh, discussion is problematic. I think that there are two opinions 
We need to talk about them. We need to understand those two approaches and put it on the table. And what about the whiskey? <laughs> First of all, everyone here is my friend. Okay. So we have to drink together, OK? And uh, I think that we need to choose one word that if someone say it, we need to drink. So uh, in Bar, I will, I will let you to choose the word. Cyber. <laughs> Cheers. I, I thought it would be NSO or something. Uh, no, we'll talk about we that. We can talk about few words. One bottle is okay. not enough for this word. All right, let's get to business. Um, Eugene, I'll start with you. Um, offensive cyber recently, as we've uh, hinted. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you, you'll need a lot of bottles for that. Uh, is um, uh, obviously in the headlines, in the news uh, recently, but it's been around for a long time. Uh, let's defuse the bomb. Sell it or not sell it? Uh, first of all, let's understand what we are talking about. What is offensive cyber? Is that a cyber is that that all companies. Uh, supposed to sell and uh, usually in 99% we are talking about uh, tools or solutions for collecting intelligence for uh, law enforcement uh, agencies. Okay, so from my opinion, uh, and we can talk about alternatives of selling or not selling, but it is it's pure business decision and uh, once uh, we can talk about cont who should control it, and uh, who should use it, etc. But uh, at the bottom line, if we have private company that can develop some solution, and this solution can help uh, to make, uh, now it sounds like a uh, miss, uh, miss world, but uh, can make work, uh, world uh, to be safety and uh, to, to put, to save some lives uh, in different places, remotely or not remotely, Definitely, I think we, we should sell Yeah, this there were a lot of ifs, and we're going to talk about the ifs. Um, Iftach? So first of all, I, I think I do agree with uh, Eugene on one part, that, <coughs> yes, <laughs> that uh, I recognize that there are good things about the tools and the services, and I'm, I'm surprised that you kind of danced around tooling and solutions, but these are services that are being sold that are saving lives. But just like anything else, there is a balance. And the question really is uh, whether we're selling tools, solutions, or services. And that's where the line begins to shift and drift. And the difference between a private company selling a tool blindly to someone with the ability to kind of deny responsibility and deny any kind of... Uh, repercussions on how it was used and by whom it was used is one thing. Uh, I'd be very happy to know if there exists such a situation because as far as I know, uh, these are licensed tools that uh, the company knows who's using them. They cannot be transferred. And unlike uh, what, what a lot of companies tend to say, oh, we're just making a weapon, you know, we're just selling you know, an, an Uzi. Uh, I've never heard of an Uzi that can be remotely disabled by the decision of the, the maker. Okay. We'll elaborate on this, of course, uh, later in bar. It's uh, just, uh, you know, a service. Yeah, so I want to represent a point of view which is about the ethics. The ethics is a little step that goes beyond what's legal and illegal, and it's mostly resolving or evolving around values. What do you think is right and what, what do you think is wrong? Um, my personal opinion is that the offensive technology uh, with or without the control measures that Iftah suggests is something that should be supervised in a manner that leaves the discretion to governments and not to private people that put into consideration other factors. If my government wants to sell that and in fact my government does sell that, then okay, I, I think a government is allowed to make those distinctions, but if a private company um, chooses to create such technology, then at the end of the day, the temptation, I think, is too big 
And even though you might be following the rules and the laws to the letter, there are still some gray areas. Yeah. Uh, so, Avi, uh, rules and, and licenses and, uh, and all of that, and suddenly you find um, spying technology here and there, and uh, French prime minister, and who knows where. How, how that is happening? So the question is not about whether or not it's ethical to sell the tools. It's about how to supervise them and how to make sure they work the right way that we believe in it. So it's a different question. So if everybody here, if I understand correctly, agrees that it's okay to sell them, the question is who is exactly selling them and how you're supervising this kind of use. And I'll add it's another question. It's a different Can discussion. you supervise, really? The answer is yes, but... I don't want to really supervise what the countries that got it did it with, but I want the accountability. And it's a different thing, accountability of a country towards a private company and accountability of a, com a country or a nation towards another nation. These are two different things. So if you take care of the accountability issue, so you can take the private company, she can sell it, as long as you know that the other country that bought the tools has accountability, what it does with it, what less happens today. Okay. I think that one thing that we all agree about is that you cannot develop those kind of system tools, solutions. I'm not talking about services at all, okay? But you cannot develop those kind of tools and solutions uh, and sell it to whoever you want. So the, the common ground is we will not sell it to the private sector. We will not sell it to a rich man that want to spy on, on someone. A drug lord. Yeah. yeah, a drug lord. We will not sell it to a drug lord. We will not sell it to, to a lot of other uh, private individuals. Uh, but the law allows um, selling of those kind of systems and tools and solutions um, to specific amount of, uh, of countries that the Israeli government uh, uh, allowed and even has, let's say, kind of motivation to give those kind of technologies to. As an individual... Well, as, who said the Israeli government just has a second, ethics? As, as, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I, you I'm, for making my point. <laughs> um, <laughs> ju just one more second. Uh, I want to say that as a private individual, I want that my government will be able to spy on people even on me, if they need to think about that, that I've done something wrong, but this is not the case. Um, I want that the government will be able to stop terrorism. I want them to stop organized crime. And if we have our own capabilities to do it on Unit 8200, on the Shabak, on the Mossad, even on the, the uh, police, um, I think that other, other countries should have those capability also, and not all of them can develop it on their own. So if we can sell those kind of things and help them to do it, it's great. We are doing it on ships, on boats, on, on missile boats, on, on airplanes, on Uzis, on whatever kind of weapon that can kill people. But the main criticism about those kind of systems and tools is that they can maybe lead to spy on someone that will be killed later. But how will be killed? On Israeli weapons that we've sell. And those uh, let, are not something that we create. Let, let's make it a little bit harder, uh, Eugene. Uh, how can you really, and you see life, uh, you know, life is, uh, show, shows us that uh, uh, you cannot really uh, have a grip on where the technology is going. Not even real weapons, not technology. How can you really uh, make sure it doesn't fall into the wrong hands? To be honest, I don't understand the dilemma, okay? And uh, the guys know me. So that's, uh, if uh, I uh, sell hammer and somebody take hammer and kill somebody, Nobody goes to the company that produces hammer and asks why you sell, why you sell this uh, material to somebody. Uh, nobody goes to Toyota and asking why ASIS or uh, Al Qaeda guys uh, uh, use uh, Toyota jeeps in the uh, desert in Afghanistan or Iraq, and how comes that Toyota sold them these uh, products? So I'm definitely uh, assuming we are not talking about services. 
and we are, we are talking about solutions and tools, I definitely separate between the companies that can produce those tools, Leven, uh, uh, Leven, and uh, uh, the agencies, law enforcement agencies that use those tools. So now we remember that, uh, as Guy mentioned, all uh, installations of those tools uh, were approved by Israeli government. So I'm proud to live in a country when I can trust my government, when they approve something to sell to another country. And I know that uh, somebody just consider and make decision why to do it. But this is much more powerful than a hammer, you know? It's very yeah, powerful. But, but, but at the bottom line, I don't think that I, the company that uh, produces those tools uh, should control the usage. So it's, uh, if I take you to information technology, okay, if you, uh, buy, if you buy a SAP product and you sign off a license, a user, li a user rights license, and uh, now you uh, violating or you don't use in terms of uh, you don't make the use in terms of those licenses. SAP company can uh, take this license for you or forbid you to use it. In the same manner, if I sell my product that totally installed on customer side, and you can imagine that uh, like uh, Shabak or Mossad in other country will not allow to me as a private company to be a part of operational use. I can train them and can explain them how to use it, but uh, at the bottom line, they will use uh, those two in accordance with their laws and their uh, court decision, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So now, if we have some countries that use those tools illegally, we have international law and we can export control and many, many measures how to prevent export to those countries. That's the longest explanation I've ever heard for I want to have deniability. <laughs> and I still can't have it because if, correct me if, if I heard it right, but you're basically saying once you sold something to a country, you don't have the ability to disable it because instance it's, it's I, installed on prem I do have. I, for some, for, and for a company where I work, I do have the ability to disable it. I do have the ability to, uh, to sell license for limited use. But there is a huge difference between to know that uh, uh, the tool in use or not in use and uh, to know who, are, uh, who were appointed at the targets for these tools in this country and uh, what I'm doing with those targets, et cetera, et cetera. So it's on, off, it's, you know. And then comes the question. So first of all, it's not a hammer. I think we agree. Again, a hammer, I've, I've never seen a hammer. I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm hammer too old. Hammer is more painful. I have never seen a hammer that you can turn off remotely, uh, which stops being a hammer. Uh, yeah, but, but you so know, sure? every software can be, you, most of the software, the software that, that are licensed can be terminated the license. No, so that, uh, that's phenomenal. So to the first agreement, to the first point of, oh, I'm just sending, you know, I'm just making a hammer, I'm just making a baseball bat, I'm just making a new. No, Uzi. I'm just making a So that's it's off the problem. table. I'm, I'm glad that we're in agreement. That's I'll give great. you another I'll give you another thing. If we don't sell it, somebody else will. I haven't Phenomenal. heard that, right? Phenomenal. Avi. And, so, and then someone else will have to deal uh, with I think that you can say the same thing. I think that we need to say but if I don't rob your store, yeah. somebody else will. Cyber. So. Cyber. <laughs> Uh, but really, Avi, um, how, how uh, lucrative is business is this? Uh, so maybe we just cannot ignore it. Just like any other crime. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> First of all, uh, I think it's part of a very big industry. It's a know-how which is very important for industry of defense and cyber, cyber. not only of the offensive. Uh, it's part of the know-how coming from 8200 and other places, which is very, very essential for this kind of industry. Um, it's part an, of an overall Israeli strategic decision, which would take, was taken years ago, to sell lethal and weapon capabilities around the world as part of Israel's strategy to enhance our uh, military industry in order to provide IDF with much better capabilities, which the country cannot finance by itself. So as you look at the overall, it's 
a good thing to do, and it does good in the right hands. I mean, eventually, don't mistake who are the bad guys and who are the good guys. It is a very basic question. You give it to good guys to use it the right way. Sometimes it gets to the hands of bad guys, and we have to take care of that. It's not supposed to do. We have to handle it. But don't pour the baby with the water. I mean, I want to help the good guys, and I want to make sure the get bad guys don't get it. That's it. Exactly um, uh, like uh, guns or somebody on something else. I agree. Yeah. So okay. just don't sell it to the bad guys. Absolutely. Done. Deal. I'm not. Well, the fact is, know, the question is <laughs> tell it to the, the question uh, of who's bad and who's good. You is know, a who is the good question. and who is the bad? I, I don't think that we and can dis I agree really with you. I think about good I, and bad because you know you are considered someone re really bad. I am considered someone really bad in the eyes of, of someone. So we shouldn't use the, I, those I, tools. I agree 100 percent, and I don't think it's a private company's decision to decide who's good or bad. I don't think it's either. And again in a government where uh, laws are used to kind of mask ethics, uh, it's also a problem. By the way, this, this panel should have been the shortest panel ever because first of all, there's no ethics. Second of all, there's no real representation of a government or a regulator here for some reason. Third of all, there's no real representation of any of the companies who are actively now selling right across this wall cyber weapons and services. And I saw, I saw at least two or three. Uh, I don't think we can talk about cyber weapons because you know I, I didn't see even one company, one, one company that sells something that you can push on a button and kill someone. So this is a weapon, okay? N we are talking about an intelligence systems, not about cyber weapon because this is allowed and this is not allowed by law, by ro by rule. So I think that you know cyber weapon, if someone can sell it. Let's talk about it. We I don't offensive. know about it. We said, we said but I, I want to really touch the, the point, okay? We are selling a lot of offensive solutions, but all of them are collecting information. That are, those are not killing people. And, and what, what, is there, what, what are alternatives? So at the bottom line, law enforcement agency need this information. So the alternative is 10, 10 years Wait, ago. The, uh, I'm sorry, but th this is all beside the point. Because if we agree that under certain circumstances you can sell weapons, then this discussion of whether uh, the tools that we sell are weapons and kill people or not, that's beside the point. We're talking, th the things we don't agree on are whether private companies should do that or just governments. And uh, do we encourage people to do that? And there's a whole question that we haven't brought up at all of what does that mean for the leakage of classified or edge technologies that we develop in the military and then people just run out and capitalize on it. Right, I'd like to, I'd like to take this point. Uh, remember we had cases when Israeli made weapons somehow was turned against us in uh, some parts of the world after it was resold. What about cyber technologies? I could see more frequent cases of stealing guns from uh, Selim at, uh, and other uh, army bases. No, that's rather, not the case. Rather, I was talking than, about selling and reselling, not stealing. I'm, I'm not talking about stealing. I, I'm, I'm talking about selling and then reselling and then uh, at the end of so the chain. I, oh, there's I, one I'm example. Not, I'm not that, familiar uh, because of... Uh, there is one example. Mortars that we sold Lebanon in the 80s were later used against us. Yeah, by guns Sultan. here and there around the world. Uh, yeah, you know, guns but, but again, okay, but cyber technologies, I'm, I don't... Uh, I'm not familiar with cases when cyber technologies from any companies, even uh, that selling and presenting their But what about the risk? Maybe there were not cases yet, but what about the risk, the inherent risk in this? But again, it's not about the ethics. It's about the monitoring regime. And how do you make sure who you're selling and how you're monitoring it? It's not no. about the ethics. He, I, if, I, if I understand Yaakov correctly, he's talking about how do you choose which technology you allow to be sold? How do you regulate, if at all, what do you let people sell after they leave the military? Maybe we all agree that offensive tools are okay, but you're not allowed to do something you did in the military for X years. I don't know, I'm just making this up. But it's a, it's a serious question on technology that maybe in Israel has an edge on the rest of the world, and then someone just sells it to whomever, whether by permission or not, and then what happens with that? I fully agree. Today, this is a very problematic place. If you're talking about ethics of taking know-how from places you got it, 
and take it outside for the commercial world. Very big issue. It's not about the ethics of selling the tools. It's about making them for the know-how which is not yours. The latter causes the former. I, I think that, you know, if you, if, if you work in the military and, you know, as a, as a soldier, and then a few days later you go and, and instruct people all over the world of how to fight, how to kill people, how to defend uh, in the real world, okay? Not in the cyber world. It's okay. Um, yeah, it's even, okay. You even know, driver, a lot of you can take drivers. We, we wholeheartedly driver, disagree. <laughs> guys, drivers that, were, that got a driver license in army going to work as a driver when uh, he's out of army. There's, there's what a, is the difference between I learned driver how to drive a tank in the and army, cyber okay. and, and offensive cyber specialists? <laughs> But, no, uh, I, I think say, that uh, say it again. just got his, uh, his pilot license, so now you can work in the Air Force, right? I, <laughs> I am serving at the Air Force, but yes. It's <laughs> being so, a driver in the military has no technological edge on being a driver in the outside world. So if you're a driver in the military and you want to be a driver when you get discharged, then by all means. But if you were developing frontline and you know, cutting edge attack technologies, that the rest of the world does not have. And then you get this charge and the first thing you do is form a company or go work at one, it's not the same. But it's the same if you develop in the, you know, in the military, in the government, special tool to defend against cyber attack and then go work for a defense company that does exactly the same. So basically the same technology leaks. No, same the, technology. The problem is different. That's a good point. What That's is a very good point. It's not your decision. It's not your decision. If it's defined by the military is classified, you're not allowed to take it forward. I don't know if being everybody, I know some, but maybe driving a car is not classified. Maybe learning how to defend perimeter security is not classified. Most of these are classified. But that is a very easy test because putting the classification on something, it's a very measurable thing. But when people ask me about the military training, I tell them that it's not the knowledge because today you can learn anything online. Everything that I was teaching in the military, you can learn online. What you can't learn online is the methodology and the indoctrination of facing problems and solving them and then gaining the experience and learning ideas that a nation state has, the way you operate your resources and to come up with ideas that regular people who don't have these at their disposal can't even dream of. And then you go outside and you take that way of thinking with you. It's not, it's not just the ability to find vulnerabilities, because really, that, you can learn that by yourself. But, but in bar, once we are, to, we are not talking, we agree that we are not talking about the codes that they take from army and then they use when developing NSO tools, okay? So I'm uh, just, uh, I can use my knowledge and my experience that I acquired in, in my unit where I serve. And uh, in this case, actually, I, I really don't see a problem uh, and, and the alternative. So the government can decide that all those people should be, uh, should never be released from army. Of course it can, no, it can decide something else. And, it can tell also, you. And also can decide to pay salary uh, for uh, many, many years and uh, instead of uh, let those people working for. Cyber. Or it can let you sign a contract in the beginning that says, we are going to teach you all that on the condition that you don't abuse it. In, according to our terms. But, uh, but who that's can, a fair, who, that's a fair who can you not trust abusing. I use my knowledge and we're, experience. Yeah, we're, we're getting, I think, a little too far. If we go back to the basics, right now the situation is that, as Avi mentioned, it's a commercial enterprise. It's a private commercial enterprise that is allowed to operate without any scrutiny, without regulation, and essentially sell to whomever they deem ethical. They have their own ethics committees, but again, it's not a public company even. It's a private company. It's but a, they're it's working a business, under it's, just a second, it's a business no. enterprise. Let's not talk about, again, this is, a, this is a country where we have religious laws, all right? We don't have a separation between church and state. Let's not talk about <laughs> NSO, ethics and NSO, law, okay? for example, also operates wait, wait, wait. under, at, under at, EU, cyber, at, at the EU controls the day, and US controls. At the end of the day, it's a private company that decides to sell to whomever it wants, and gets a rubber stamp from API, from whoever it is, I got one when I was close to that area. And getting a license to export? It's easy. Yeah, that is easy. It's easier than getting a I driver's think Avi license. Avi doesn't agree. I don't agree with a few things. First of all, 
you do not sell whatever you want, wherever you want. Maybe it's easy, maybe not, maybe you should fix a monitoring issue. It's, there are rules, there is law, you're not doing whatever you want. And I didn't say that. I do it under the law. Second thing, as I said, today, Israel takes um, responsibility for licensing your product. They are licensing where you want to sell it. They even make you bring an end user certificate from the customer to make sure it gets to the right customer that you said so. But they are not involved in the, along the way. The, the customer, the country that buy that, does not see the state of Israel on the other side. They see only a private country, a private company, I'm sorry. Whatever the company wants to get from the government, they go, they get the license and back and forth. But the other country does not say no accountability by a country, only by a private, and you don't know what the private salesman that said, and what did they promise, and what do they give. Because today it's only to make the V. I think the, and today, by the way, without doing real monitoring, because the monitoring is not real, they are killing the companies. The bureaucracy is so hard, they are killing the companies. So I can, I think, this should, on one hand, monitoring much more effectively and take responsibility for the product who gets it and what to do with it. On the other side, help the companies by giving them less bureaucracy. They're not really suffering from the bureaucracy. No Otherwise, bureaucracy. this wouldn't have been such a lucrative business that a certain company, which I swore not to say its name, got sold three times. You have no idea what kind of bureaucracy they are handling. I'm sure they suffer. means they're not selling. I was there. I Before that, I closed that company uh, okay. and, Iftach, I and got it bankrupt, a, a I was there. Big, uh, and maybe you changed bef before 10 or 15 years ago. That I, I think that cyber was, you know, if you are willing to do it, you will go to the MOD and get the approval. You didn't have to do it. And today you have to do it. You have to follow strict rules and you need to basically ask to show the product, to talk with the company, to the, to the specific country, to the specific client, to get the end user license, uh, uh, the end user that is going to use it, and a lot of other approvals. So basically, if we're talking about something that happened maybe even seven years ago, it's not what happened now. It's not the same. So uh, having said all that in bar, uh, what, what happened with NSO? What, what, what was the problem? <laughs> Let's put it on Just there. a second. It's, it's if, we've so, if we talked about NSO, we need to drink again. Uh, I ran out. <laughs> so first of all, <laughs> please do the honors. Novichok. Um, I think that, as I said at the, at the beginning, I represent the ethics point of view. You can have different discussions. And there is a forum on one of the courses that I was teaching and wrote the curriculum to, and they have a bi-monthly meeting, and at one point, they, somebody offered to invite the CEO of that company who must not be named. And uh, we have a mailing list that was really, to my surprise, a very civilized discussion of pros and cons. And I expressed my opinion. I said, guys, I think it's an ethics problem. I think you guys learn to do very dangerous things and, and right now this company has dubious reputation and I don't think we should let that person speak here. And uh, the discussion continued uh, with the decision of letting him come and speak. So I decided I wouldn't attend. I'm, I'm an advocate but I don't do, you know, I don't act against. And two weeks later we had the B-Sides conference which I uh, helped run. And as I was standing in line for food, a woman I'm not familiar with taps on my shoulder and says, hello, and I say hi, and she says, hi, I'm whatever from uh, that company. And I'm gonna say what she said in the exact words, and I want you to notice. She says, we read what you wrote about, um, never mind, uh, we think you have a bad impression of us, we'd like to invite you to a coffee. And to me, that felt like mob behavior. It's like, we read what you wrote about us. And I wrote it on a private email forum of a certain you know, alumni group. And in she Bal, didn't say... Private email forum? Really? No, I understand... You know, there are three hackers in, in this I table. I understand okay? that there are alumni of that course working there. But a woman whom I've never met that comes to me and says, we've read what you wrote about us, 
That is intimidation. Yes, it worked, though, but you know, I, I don't think it is an intimidation. I think, I think, first of all, there is no such thing as private forum on the internet, right? We all know about. Um, and second of all, it's it's very clear to me that some of the people that you uh, taught and took your amazing course, uh, you know, working for those kind of companies, and I can understand the frustration. I taught them to defend the country, and they are going to sell those things to uh, to a company. Um, but when I think about those kind of things, I think that it's amazing that a company that receive criticism approach the people that are criticized them and trying to talk with them and explain and, and even get the, the, the right uh, criticism firsthand. It's amazing. By but it's not firsthand. Yeah. Because they could have sent that person on the mailing list that knows me because yeah. I was their teacher and they could have told me, hi, Inbal, uh, I'd like to invite you to our company because we think we can convince you otherwise. Instead, it was like someone I've, yeah, I've so, never so met he's telling me chicken. he didn't read. want to do it. He's a chicken. It's, it's, it's the little subtleties of how you do that. I, I, I don't even, I mean, I, I got an invitation for coffee as well. It was never materialized, by the way, even after I accepted. It, it, it's besides the point. I think, again, if, if we're representing the ethical side, uh, the fact of the matter is, as I said before, private company selling without scrutiny, without real scrutiny, to whoever it decides to sell to, uh, coming in from a business commercial incentive. At the end of the day, the ethics question to me, well, there's two. One, how do you allow it or how do you regulate it? And you know, I think we're all under the understanding that it's not happening because there are higher forces that <laughs> I, have... I, I do just not second, agree about the ethics and I do not agree right, just about... Just a second. Wait, wait, wait. Let, let me get to the... So yeah. that's one part of the ethics question. Again, laws and regulations, that's one th side. The other side is really the, the industry side, let's call it. Uh, and I think that's where, where Envire and I uh, are in, in uh, violent agreement, which is, from, for me, as a professional, uh, in my perspective, a person that decided knowingly to work for a company with this kind of reputation has chosen a certain ethical side. And as far as I'm, concer I'm concerned, to me, this represents a certain position in information security. For me, information security is based on trust. And again, I'm a hacker. I used to run red teams. I worked with the military, with government organizations. I currently work with defense, still work in consulting. There is a very clear ethical line. And whomever decides to cross that ethical line is a simple industry decision to basically shun them out of the industry and keep them operating within those private enterprises that can do whatever they want. But who put you the one that decides that this is ethics? Me? This is your ethics. Yeah, my that's ethics my ethics. A little different. Absolutely, and that's this what I'm saying. This is one thing. And that's the other that's thing what I'm doing. Is that you know you put two major things. One is that you are you are carrying the ethics side. I think that I'm carrying the ethics side because my systems that were developed help to catch the bad guys. That help to catch terrorists. Help to catch organized crime and. What, uh, did, you know, what else did it help? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Avi? I believe if that if I would ask you if I would have gone working for a company that developed suicide drones and sell them under supervision to countries, armies around the world, I think you would have said the same thing about the ethics. So it's not about the cyber. But it's about selling personal. weapons. Ethics okay. are personal. And while I completely agree with Iftar's position, I, I said earlier that I, I'm more of an advocate than an actor. What I do is in my limited area, and I have friends and colleagues who worked at those places, and I like them just as I like, I don't know, people who drink scotch with ice. Now, I disapprove, but that's their choice. What can I say? I think that when it came to choose between a number of people, it would be really hard for me because I have some friends who used to work there and actually some that still do, and they're super talented, and I would love to work with them, but I, I find it very hard, like Iftah says, it's a matter of trusting not just the person, because I don't think they're liars or something, it's trusting the way they make decisions. And we okay. want to share the values. Let me, 
uh, just uh, in order to conclude, a uh, quick round, really quick, of is anything going to change dramatically in this or are we going uh, to see more and more uh, sales of this and distribution around the world? Let's do a quick one. How do you think it's going to uh, continue? I hope that uh, nothing will change in terms of uh, products and uh, solutions and I hope that Israel will lead this domain and uh, we will provide uh, this solution to all around the world. Uh, I do agree with uh, Avi that we have to be sure that we have good control uh, coming from government and it's very important that the government uh, verify that all those solutions going to governmental uh, va uh, legit uh, law uh, enforcement agencies. And uh, if you ask about NSO as representing this, uh, this decision, I think that NSO, uh, actually, the people mixed between the usage and product, and instead of going and asking some very hard question to users, they ask those questions from product maker. And, uh, and I think that once uh, people understand how to separate separate it for all other companies, all other players, the, it would be very clear and understood for everybody how to deal with it. Okay, in that quick, any change? You foresee any change? I don't think the ethics are going to change because it's a matter of personal values and I think finance and politics kind of dictate it. But as there is more and more scrutiny, whether it's the uh, civilian researchers that expose uh, and other you know, details coming to light, I think there will be some shift, I hope. Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely no change is going to happen. Uh, I do hope that Israel will manage just like it did with uh, the crypto and the forex and the porn industries that, and the adware industries that used to represent Israel uh, as kind of the bad guy in that uh, cyber arena. That's also going to happen with offensive cyber. Right. There, there used to be a moderator on American television, McLaughlin, he used to have this uh, uh, politics uh, panel and he would say, you are right. <laughs> yes, Avi. Very shortly, there is a very, very big wave in the world of human, human trafficking, arts trafficking, drugs trafficking, terror, and corruption, money laundering. So the need is growing for countermeasures and intelligence is going very rapidly. And there will be no void. So not only is the state going to stay the same, it's going to grow, but it's going to change. It's going to grow, but it's going to change. Guy, final word. I think that the world has already changed about it. I think that uh, you see all those uh, articles about NSO. We've just seen today about Candiro, which is another company here in Israel. Very good. You know, all of them are leading the, the way in, in the intelligence industries. Um, and I think that there is already a change. I don't approve this change. I think that this change can really uh, make a problem for the uh, law enforcement agencies uh, to fight the, the really bad thing, like uh, Avi just mentioned. So this change has whole, already happened, and I, I'm not sure that it's a good change. Okay. Thank you very much for the uh, lively you. debate, and uh, you've you. uh, made my work easy. Cyber! Uh, and uh, cheers and l'chaim. Okay.